What's going on everyone? It is Juno Ryan coming at you with another video. Y'all, it has been way too long. As most of you know, I am in the United States military. So being that I'm in the United States military, you can get stationed pretty much anywhere in the world. Well, recently, I was stationed in beautiful Okinawa, Japan. Okinawa, Japan isn't where you would think as much most of mainland is. It's actually a little island pretty far to the south of much of the rest of the mainland, if that makes sense. And is really absolutely one of the most gorgeous places I've ever seen. Currently, I'm at a place with these giant, giant rock cliffs. You just look right here. And the amount of life here is absolutely crazy. I've been seeing a lot of giant spinner sharks coming up and jumping, a giant bait ball. Haven't seen much for actual fish, haven't actually had any bites, but this place is absolutely crazy and there's a lot of potential to catch some cool stuff here. Now, I didn't join the military so I could go fish exotic places, but it has been a pleasant surprise um, since I've joined getting to see these new places and do these new things. So, for instance, I got to go on a couple trips when I was in San Diego doing some training. We had some time off, got to go chase yellowfins there. Now in Okinawa, I get to do these crazy land-based excursions, fishing from land here. So, haven't had a lot of opportunities, but when I do, there are things that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't join. So, you know, every once in a while, the government comes through and uh, you get to do some cool stuff on their dime coming out here. So believe it or not, where I'm fishing today is actually one of the few places you can catch a mahi-mahi or dorado, dolphin, whatever you call it, where you're from, from shore. This, spot, this rock ledge right here. The reason being, it is insanely deep behind me. It's probably anywhere from 40 to 80 feet deep right from shore. So that gives the dolphin that are normally a very, like a far offshore fish, they don't feel uncomfortable coming in close to shore where you would in a lot of places in the world. That's why you don't catch dolphin off the beach normally. But here with that deeper water, they come in and chase bait and it feels natural to them. It feels very normal. So there's not a gradual grade. It is a straight up, straight down. So if you're looking at these clips, I actually have some video here shared from other people that have caught these freaking dolphin here. It's absolutely insane. So something I'm super excited to do. I may not get the chance to catch one today, but we're definitely gonna catch one while we're out here. So right now, pretty bored. What, what I'm doing is I'm just taking this 80 gram jig, called it a butterfly jig back in the States. They don't, I think they call it a speed jig here in Japan. And I'm literally just blind casting. I got some 80 pound fluorocarbon. I think I went a little overboard putting hooks on here, but whatever more hooks more hookups right i don't know but um yeah I'm literally just blind casting it out sometimes i'm sinking it all the way to the bottom and jigging it back up and other times i'm just straight retrieving it on top but let's see if we can maybe pull like a mackerel or something on the blind cast Oh! Buddy over there just hooked it on his shrimp rig. That freaking shark was angry. So just talked to some guys that have been out here a little bit longer than I have and they said today there was a bunch of yellowfin tuna. Freaking yellowfin tuna spotted from the rocks. Y'all, some of you may not know how crazy that is, but that's absolutely insane. From shore, there's yellowfin tuna within sight, swimming around in here chasing some bait. No one actually caught one, but that is absolutely insane that there's potential to catch a yellowfin tuna from land here. What I think would be really cool here is uh, kind of doing like 
what they call a pin rig in North Carolina or uh, just a trolley rig like we call it back in Florida. Having like a little bonita or something like that and having it out here and just kick it on top. Just kick it on top. I feel like just some giant kingfish or a tuna or something like that will just come up and crush it. But who knows? Also talked to some of the other local guys and they said that there's days where they'll catch like 40, 50 mahi in a day from this spot. Unfortunately, I found out that this time of year, I'm right at the end of the season. So it's like December right now. Normally you want to be in like September through November. So cross your fingers, maybe one of these days we're going to get a shot to catch one. Asking a few more questions to some of these local guys. Really what they do is very similar to what I grew up doing out at the freaking pier. So what they'll do is they'll look for the bait balls. They'll see the bait balls like I have today, which is actually really promising. And a lot of the time they'll just wait for mahi or tuna or kingfish, or mackerel, whatever it is, to chase the bait ball in and they'll see the bait, get real nervous, it comes up on top, it's kind of boiling, looks like boiling water. And it'll start rushing towards the rocks. And that means there's school of dolphin or whatever it is on them. Then they'll present a butterfly jig, Exactly like I presented the diamond jig back in the day off the pier. You just cast the butterfly jig out way past the freaking bait ball and reel it on top so it looks like a skipping bait. And they're really retrieving it really, really fast. So it's a very, it's like almost you don't need to be casting most of the time. You can just kind of wait and look for those visual cues. Look for that sight fishing opportunity. It's actually, it's crazy how similar a lot of the things that they do out here is kind of what I grew up doing in Florida, exactly on the other side of the world. Now the locals have left. Don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but I got this point all to myself. Now this point is exactly where all the water comes from that direction and hooks around. So if there's one fishy spot, it's right freaking here. I think I'm gonna fish it at least until sundown. Yeah, I mean, until sundown. So I'll keep throwing this butterfly jig and hope so that we get a bait run or something of that sort. And when visibility starts getting a little bit lower, I think I'm gonna switch to like a plug and a popper and maybe raise something on a blind cast. Back home, that like 10 to 15 minute window right before the sun went down was like on like Donkey Kong when you're throwing plugs from land. It was like you knew that you're gonna get one to two good bites from a nice kingfish straight off the pier in the summertime. So I'm willing to bet sundown is pretty good in spots like this too. Just maybe not for dolphin, but I bet you there might be something. Now if we do hook something good, I don't have a gaff or a net or any way of getting it from freaking 30 feet up. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take the fish and walk it over to this freaking tide pool right here. And that's gonna be the place to land it. Gonna be treacherous, but willing to risk it for the biscuit, if you know what I'm saying. Now I'm gonna throw this Yozuri popper. See if we can raise anything. Lights a little bit lower. Got a better chance that this uh, can be effective. Good. These poppers from so up high. Really need to let your line get down, get in the water a little bit. That way, popper actually acts the way. It's meant to it's chugging as much water as possible. When you get it closer and the angle of that line starts coming up, the mouth of the popper starts coming up when you try to retrieve it and it doesn't really disperse the water and get that chug that you really want it to. So you have to be patient with it, work it properly so it actually looks like it's supposed to. Not feeling it, let's change it up. faithful right here. I'll do a quick uni knot to a split ring and chuck her out there see what we can get. This is a size 14 Rapala X-Rap. 
always wet your knot before you cinch it down. Slowly cinch her down. Bite the tag end, I just bite it and pull it tight. Then you can snip her. Paula's has really been the best bang for my buck over the years when it comes to just fish finding lures. Pretty, uh, you're going to have to be very creative with the retrieve. Sometimes the best thing you got is literally just a steady retrieve. I find that can be just as effective as anything else. But sometimes you can also get creative with it. Give it a little walking motion, just like that. And speed it up, stop it, and speed it up, and stop it, just like that. You can really do a lot with it. Caught a little bit of everything, snug, tarpon, barracudas, kingfish, uh, cobia, all over the years, big jack crevels. So, really just mimics sardine or any other fleeing bait fish. That, that wide wobble that it has is nice. Really gets a lot of fish excited when they're around. Right now may not be a good indication. The last cast before I, uh, Wait too long for dark and bust my ass on the rocks back. Ready? Go. Right here, we have my wonderful island car. Now, Okinawa cars don't really need to go as fast, so being that they don't have to go as fast, they don't really get worn down to the same degree a lot of our cars back in the States do. So, cars light stay around longer, they're in less demand, so you can get them for fairly cheap. This, you got a Subaru Impreza, and here, it's got like 100,000 kilometers on it, and you can buy them for like 1,500 bucks. It's crazy. It's really not like a car culture like we have back in the States. So not the wonderful Chevy Silverado that I drove back in Florida but she'll do for the next two years while I'm out here well we can't say we didn't try that spot from what I've heard can be absolutely epic and you see like I was trying to explain to you guys there is a lot of potential now if maybe the bait would have came and stayed in as the light was getting low maybe some fish would have come around but you know what that's fishing you don't always catch them I'm super excited to get to learn this new fishery on this freaking little island that I'm living on now. So, don't have a whole lot of free time, but when I do, you can bet yourself I'm going to be out there fishing and making some awesome videos. So, just a little update video for you guys today. Not a whole lot of fishing to action, but I'm super excited to keep on creating some awesome content for you all. And I hope you guys are excited to come along with me on the journey. So until that next video, y'all, hope you guys can get on some fish. Catch you later.